Hello and welcome to Relatable Code. In this video, we're going to talk about extension functions and Kotlin. So let's get started. Okay, so before we talk about extension functions and Kotlin, let me do us all a huge favor here. Delete everything in my main method. And, well, not delete anything here. Let's just comment them out. 400 lines of code, wow. We really did cover a lot in these videos. Uh, okay, so let's start here from scratch, basically. Uh, let's define a book class having a title, an author, and a price that's a double. Okay. So this is our class. Uh, okay, so why do we need extension functions and what are extension functions basically? Uh, let's say we want to define a method for this uh, class called display details. Okay. Uh, the way we do that is we just uh, create a method here called display details. And this display details just uh, basically prints out the uh, uh, title. Okay, we have to use a val for our title, our author, and our price. Okay, that's how we format them. Dollar sign author and dollar sign price basically. Okay, that's how we define a display details function, but that's not really an extension function. It's just a normal function that we defined in our class book. But you don't always have the flexibility of doing that. Why? Because sometimes when you're working in your code, uh, you have some classes that you have to work with, but you can't really modify. Okay, so you're going to have to work with some classes that are read only. So we can't actually add any methods in the body of that class, okay? So what would you do in that case? Uh, extension functions here come to the help, okay? You can define this display details for our book class, but it won't be defined inside the uh, body of our class or inside the definition of our class. It would be defined outside that class, like this. You would write book dot display details just like that okay and you can have your variables directly accessed that way okay i have a uh, highlight here because i'm already using display details inside my book and that's it so how did i get a reference to the title and the author and the price if I'm not inside the body of my class, that's because I'm calling this display details method on my book, okay? My class book. So this function or whatever is inside this function has access to anything that's inside this book, basically, okay? Only the public uh, variables and functions inside this book. So that really gives you a lot of. Uh, flexibility when working because uh, as I've told you, you don't always have the luxury of modifying your classes when you work with them. Okay, and besides that, sometimes you really don't want to modify your classes. You just want to add some functionality without modifying the existing functionality of your classes. And that's how extension functions help. Okay, uh, by using this, you don't actually modify anything inside the class. You're just adding some features or functionalities to that class. Okay, so if I write in my main method here, if I create a book like this, and 5.0. I can directly write book dot display details like this. Okay. 
because display details is an extension function, which is why I don't use it like this, how we normally used functions in the past. Okay, extension functions need uh, the first part, which is in our case book, so that we can call them. Okay, and that's how you call them. And let's run our main function. As you can see, I have book title, book author, and the price, which is coming from the display details, which just prints out these uh, properties from our class. Okay, and extension functions really provide you a really nice way of writing your code, besides extending the functionality of already existing classes. Okay? Now, as for the second advantage of using extension functions, as I've already told you, uh, inside the scope of an extension function, you can only access the public uh, variables and functions of your class or whatever you're calling the extension function on, okay? Uh, for example, here, if I have private val description string, for example, with this default value, if I try to access this description outside my class, I can't do that, okay? Because extension functions actually respect uh, these access modifiers of the classes that they are called on. And by doing that, you can make sure that your extension function only has access to what it needs, basically, from that class, okay? Now, as for the third uh, benefit of using extension functions, if you want, I already said flexibility, but I'm going to show you a new level of flexibility with extension functions. So we have this display uh, details method uh, defined here, but let's say we want to have uh, this book used in another file in our application, which will happen because you will have a lot of files to work with. Let's say I have a, uh, for example, main v2 here, and I have another main method in that file. And in that file, I also want to define my book. Main2 title. Main2 author. And let's say we have a price here of 10.0. Uh, I have the flexibility of defining this extension function as private in this file. So in my second file, I can't really call it, okay? Which gives me the flexibility of defining functionality for this class uh, just for a specific section in my application. Okay, I may want to define a separate uh, uh, maybe functionality for my display details for my main v2 class or file in this case, such as maybe just uh, printing out the title and the author of this book instead of printing out all the details. Okay, because if you only use the display details here, you don't really have that flexibility because when you call display details on this book, it will get called uh, with this function body. The same goes for uh, the main method and my other file. Okay. Meanwhile, having these extension functions like that really provide me with a lot of flexibility with uh, separating the logic of my code. Okay. I may want to define. Uh, separate behaviors for my files in my application. Okay, and that's really easy to do in this case. Okay. And now for my favorite benefit of using extension functions, DTOs basically. Okay, so what are DTOs? Uh, let's say I have a data class book in my application and this book has a lot of properties. Okay, uh, which is fine. But uh, when I get to the section of implementing the UI of my application, I don't really need all of these properties to implement that UI. I may only need the title, the author, and the price of that book. Okay, so I don't really have to use this uh, data class book 
In that case, I would just use a DTO, which is a data transfer object, okay, for that purpose, just so that I can uh, still benefit from my initial book, but from a section of that book, not that whole book, okay? Uh, which is why I defined another uh, data class, which is called book DTO. It will take a title, an author, and a price, which in this case, I want to be a string, okay? Uh, the price inside my initial data class book uh, here was a double, which was correct because when dealing with prices in general, you have to use doubles. But when you want to display that price, maybe you want to display it uh, next to a dollar sign or a euro sign, for example. And for that purpose, you would need a string, basically. Okay. Uh, and extension functions provide you with... Uh, a really nice way of converting from this book to this book DTO when you want it, okay? And let's see how you can define an extension function for that purpose like this, fun book dot to book DTO, okay? It would return a book DTO. And for that, I need to actually return a book DTO. So I have to create it. And how would I create it? Here I would write return book DTO. I have to supply first a title. For that, I can write title equals title, basically. Okay. So this title would be equal to this book title. Okay. And second, I need an author. So I write author equals author, basically. Okay. So I said that the author of my book DTO will be equal to the author of my book data class. And finally, for the price, I would write price equals. I would uh, write a string like that. I would write the dollar sign. And after that, I would write price like that okay if i put them next to each other uh, it would uh, seem as if i'm trying to access the price of my book as a string okay if i write another dollar sign i think that would work uh, so now i would have dollar sign and the price itself from my book let's see how we can use it so inside our main method we can write uh, we can basically initialize our data class book here. This will take a while. Title equals book title. Author equals book author. Publication year equals, it has to be an integer. Let's say it's 2023. Genre equals fiction, mm, language equals to English, page count equals to 300, and we still have our price and our description. So let's say price was equal to 7.0 and description, book, description. Okay. And here I want to convert this book into my book DTO. So I can write book dot to book DTO, just like that, okay? And I can even print it out like this. So if I run my main function, here you can see this is my book DTO. This is the title of my book DTO. It's book title. The author is book author. And the price is $7.0. Okay. Uh, this extension function provided me a very fast way of converting from my book to the book DTO that I needed as per my requirements. Okay. Maybe I want to display this book DTO in some UI or any other purpose inside my whole application. Okay. And that was basically extension functions in Kotlin. If you find my content to be relatable, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for future content, and I'll see you in the next video.